Mistakes at their core are a large reason why we are the ranks we are, and learning how to avoid them and just mess up less sounds good in theory, but is really hard to put into practice. Oftentimes, we don't actually know what a mistake is. Something that seems right can be totally detrimental to your game, and you may go hundreds or thousands of games without ever realizing it. Today, we're going to be pointing out three of the harder to notice mistakes that you might not even know you're making. So be on the lookout for these in your own games, and let's get right into it. Let's just look at an example game where we have a Karthus and Duquesne matchup. Right before buffs are about to spawn, our top laner checks our Raptor bush and finds the enemy jungler in it. He ends up fighting him, winning pretty convincingly, and even leaves a ward in the bush on the way back towards top. Now it's on Karthus to try and figure out how to respond to this situation. If you're Karthus, you're probably concerned about a few things. One being that Kane can still queue over this wall and try to take our red, so it makes sense to try and stop that from happening, right? Well, not exactly, and this is where you're probably wondering, why not? Any action you do in the game always comes with a trade-off. If you're ganking top, that means you can't be pressuring bot at the same time. In the same vein, if you're trying to stop the invade, that means you aren't doing other things like farming your camps. So now comes the real question. Is it more worth it to try and stop Kane from getting our red, or should we just carry on and ignore it? One large benefit of continuing to farm is that you cycle your camps. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, every time your camps die and respawn, they come back at a higher level. Because of this, higher level camps are worth more experience. So if Kane is really willing to be pushed off of our raptors, go into the Baron pit to queue over the wall, and then get our red, how much do you think we can get done in that time frame? Probably two or three camps at the minimum. After that, Kane is probably going to be forced to go back into his jungle and would likely do his blue first. At this point, he's not going to have cycled any of his camps, while we quite literally might have done three or all four of our lesser camps if we just kept pathing up and ignored him. And from here, we might even be able to play for double crab since Kane still has a ton of camps left to do and will be lower level than us. When people invade this early on into the game, they really sacrifice a lot due to the time it takes to walk to places, as well as the fact that none of their camps are respawning. It's definitely human nature to want to face the problem head on and deal with it by actually running all the way over to that side of the map, but all you're doing by doing that is also committing a ton of walking time and skipping all of your own camps. Sometimes just letting people get away with stuff is the better play. Kane just simply doesn't gain enough from invading here to make it worthwhile for you to set yourself behind. There's also the other situation that we talked about where Kane doesn't even bother invading again. And now you're putting behind your own clear when you should have a massive advantage in pacing because he literally didn't get to do his first camp until around 150. Karthus could have potentially split the map and gone to invade after a few camps, just because he knew he was so ahead in pacing and it wouldn't have been very easy for Kane to contest. Even with the delay of walking all the way across the map and then clearing back down, at 4 minutes Karthus is still up 2 camps, just because Kane was, well, that slow. If we pan over to look at what info Karthus has right now, we can see that everyone in bot lane is super low, and that Kane is here. So sticking around to stop the dive is great, but after that we need to start thinking about how to actually get ahead and punish Kane for being so slow in his early clear. If we count CS, we now know what Kane has up, and what he has down. Likely, his Krugs are still alive, and Top Crab is still in play. Instantly, I'm thinking about how to use my tempo here to punish him. Not only are my topside camps coming up soon, and I can take advantage of them being leveled up, I can also run straight to Top Crab after a recall, and I'm going to be on map, with items, while he can't possibly be there without giving something up. He can go to Krugs, and then try to go to Top Crab after clearing them, but after backing or not, it doesn't really matter. If I go straight from base, he can never get there in time. The only way he could get to Top Crab in time is by running there right now. Then he won't have items, and he'll be forced to be on map with very little power in comparison to me, who is about to spend all of my gold. In the process, he's also going to not cycle his Krugs camp, so even though he may get Top Crab, he won't be able to get ahead in camps no matter what he does, and it's only going to get worse because Karthus has his second rotation of camps coming up immediately. Basically, Kane is always behind here if Karthus does the correct play, as he can always force a catch-22. However, this only happens if Karthus recalls right now. A lot of junglers do things like this where they have a guaranteed way of getting ahead of the other player 
and then choose to risk it all on a really coin flip gank. All that pacing advantage we got earlier is literally thrown right out of the window now. And while our top laner does happen to take top crab and alleviate a bit of this for us, we can't rely on that to always happen. After the delayed recall, Karthus goes to his top side, and then clears down, taking some vision in the meantime. When he does arrive around mid after Raptors, he's going to make another mistake. The goal of every gank is not to get a kill or even summoners. In fact, sometimes it's detrimental to even try to do that. Why? Because laners' wave states are hugely important when it comes to how they can play the game, and by the nature of jungle, that also affects you. There are going to be plenty of ganks where your goal is strictly to fix the wave state. Whether that means you kill someone and then fix the wave after, or just show up to shove the lane, it really depends. But you need to guarantee that you can actually fix the wave first and foremost. Karthus decides to try and run it rise and chunk him out. And just like before, we need to think about what we're giving up to do this. If we're choosing to use damage on Rise, we aren't using damage on the wave. We just left it in a spot where Katarina, a melee champion with no flash right now, has to try and push in a wave that can be frozen right in front of Ryze's tower. This is just really hard to actually do, and if Kane had been around mid instead, it would be even worse. Plenty of times junglers will just run into a lane to do damage and not really think about why. What reason are you even ganking in the first place? How is it supposed to help your laner? These are questions that are extremely important to ask before you show on map. In other videos, I've gone over just how bad it is to give away information for free, and when you choose to gank, you're actively choosing to show on the map and give away information. Automatically, this means that whatever you're choosing to do with that gank needs to be worth at least that, at the bare minimum. It's for this reason that I will recommend junglers to just play lanes, whether it's in normal games or in ranked. Just having the laning perspective can make you feel when you really wish your jungler would have done something for you, and in turn, this makes you a better jungler. You'll be quicker to catch on to recognize these kinds of situations and know immediately really what your laner wants to do. The only reason players specialize in one role is because it's just hard to learn everything. But at the highest level, players have a deep understanding of other lanes, not just their own. And that's something that you can start working on right now. We have plenty of guides for laners that even as a jungler, you should watch. Because jungle and lanes are so fundamentally different, we really need to make a conscious effort for not only junglers to understand laners, but for laners to understand junglers. And that way, we can avoid the constant flame that happens between the two sides. I know it sounds like I'm preaching for systemic change, but really it needs to happen. Now, what you find here on YouTube is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to unlock your true potential, then you need to dive into skillcap.com. We have the largest catalog of League of Legends guides in the entire world, with over 1,500 guides and 350 unique courses. You get brand new guides every week exclusive to our website, along with our Smurf commentaries where our challenger experts walk you through how to carry out of the exact rank you're stuck in. Still unsure? Well, you can have all your questions answered by those same challenger experts. Need one-on-one -on -one coaching? We got you covered with hand-picked coaches trained to the highest standard. Don't have time for that? Use Direct Pro, pick a past game you played, and within 24 hours get a personalized video from a top 100 challenger player breaking down exactly what you can do better. The best part, all of this comes with a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to Skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted, link in the description below. Anyways, just within the first 7 minutes of this game, Karthus made 3 massive mistakes that we see all the time. But it's unlikely that he even realized that they happened, or that they were even bad. There is no one correct way to play League of Legends, but knowing what things you might be missing can help you plug holes in your own gameplay, and we hope that today's video at least gave you some food for thought. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.